Hi, I'm Robert Estrin here at livingpianos.com with a show about Chickering Pianos. Chickering & Sons, one of the most respected of the American piano companies and one of the very oldest piano companies in the United States. Abraham Lincoln owned a Chickering piano. In fact, there were several Chickering grand pianos in the White House. Chickering is one of the leading piano companies and esteemed for generations. Chickering began their piano building in Boston in 1823, and they were responsible for many innovations in the piano, most notably the cast iron plate, which all pianos have today. Before that, metal parts were employed in pianos, but the single one cast iron frame that all pianos have today that was uh, an achievement that Chickering brought to the piano. One thing that makes Chickering pianos unique, if you look at a Chickering, the cheek block on the left-hand side of the piano is quite a bit wider than on other pianos. As a result, you have more soundboard area on a Chickering than you do on a Steinway or other pianos of equal size. This enriches the tone because the soundboard is the sound producer for a piano, and so having all things equal, a chickering is going to have a bigger sound for the size piano than other piano brands. The story about chickering in the 1850s, right around the year 1850, there was a series of concerts featuring the piano, which was a very unusual thing at that time. And Henry Steinway happened to be at one of these concerts, and in fact, he was at the stage and people couldn't tear him away. He was there. This was before Steinway and the Sons was in existence. Interestingly, it was just a few years later that the first Steinway pianos appeared. So Chickering provided true inspiration for Steinway to be begin his piano company. At that time, Chickering was the number one piano company in the United States of America. And they reigned supreme as one of the leading companies in the United States for many, many decades. Of course, the piano was in its heyday. At the turn of the 20th century, there were well over a thousand companies making pianos in the United States. And of course, the advent of the phonograph and radio, and uh, then eventually the Great Depression, piano companies dwindled down until there were just about 300 companies prior to World War II. World War II really took its toll. Most piano companies at that time they didn't even make pianos, like automobile companies made uh, tanks and things. Piano companies were making parts for aircraft, like Baldwin was doing. After World War II, very few piano companies remained, but Chickering persevered, and they still were making great pianos through most of the 20th century. Well, eventually, the influx of cheap Asian pianos took its toll, and Chickering had to cease operations in the early 1980s. Now the Chickering name was sold to Baldwin Piano Company, which still has the name, now owned by Gibson. And we can only hope that someday Chickering again produces pianos under ownership of Gibson. Wouldn't that be special to have these great American pianos? It's a sad fact today that there are really only three companies making pianos in the United States, and two of them are, have a rich history in the past because each company has a unique sound, and Chickering is no exception to this. And as one of the leading piano companies throughout centuries, Chickering has a tone that can't be described, but I'll try. <laughs> it's, a, it's kind of a round, dark tone uh, that's very different from the Asian pianos that are so popular today. And of course, the reason why the Asian pianos are so popular is price. The American pianos that are around are so prohibitively expensive that you know, a little over a thousand pianos were produced in the United States last year. But if you can get your hands on one of the great American pianos like a Chickering, it is a tremendous experience playing these instruments and they represent phenomenal value in this market where some of these instruments are available at a fraction of their value. From 1898, this instrument has been restored and plays like a dream. They really built them to last back then, and the sound is glorious. If you've never heard of Chickering, it's a unique sound that is very dark and warm, and uh, if you appreciate the great American pianos like I do, I think this is a piano you would appreciate. So look for Chickering along with some of the other great American pianos. Thanks for joining me, Robert Estrin here at livingpianos.com. I'll see you next time.